Good morning, everyone. This is Patrick Russell, class of 89 and a Blue Jay. This is episode 12 of the We Want More vodcast. Pete, good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm doing well, thanks. Beautiful weather. Spring is here. No more games in 30-degree uh, weather and rain. Uh, how are things there at uh, the Cordish Center in Homewood Field? Uh, wonderful. Uh, it's actually raining here, but it is not 30 degrees. It's 65, so that's nice. Um, I'd like to think we're past that window, but I don't want to jinx okay. us. So exactly. we'll take whatever we can get. Well, I don't want to jump ahead because the purpose of this vodcast is to sort of talk about the game in the past against Ohio State at Ohio State. But everyone who watches this knows it's Maryland week. So we're getting ready for the rivalry game. We talk about many rivals, but the rivalry game of Maryland. Uh, we will touch upon the Ohio State game first, which was very exciting. Mm -hmm. uh, so, Pete, you had a Sunday night game, new venue at Ohio State. Mm -hmm. uh, primetime game, exciting, tale of two halves again. Give us your sort of insight into the Ohio State match on Sunday. Sure. Um, as always, you kind of hit some of the basics right there. Um, you know, traveling to uh, a, a different venue. We haven't played there before. It just opened last year. Um, you know, Sunday night, it's not a huge facility, but they sold out, um, you know, the capacity of what it was. Um, you know, play the evening game, uh, travel and, and, you know, some, some challenges to navigate with a lot of those things. Uh, I thought, uh, you know, it was a, it was a well-contested game. Um, you know, that, that team is tough. You know, I, I, they're about as good as a six and seven team as I've ever seen. I mean, they're, they play a, a, a really loaded schedule of, of top end teams. And so I think they've played some really close games. So I don't think their record accurately reflects how good they are, but their defense is outstanding. I mean, a lot of the things we talked about last week, um, you know, when we were, when we were doing this, that, uh, you know, there's not, not a lot of uncertainty or unknowns when it comes to those, like they're, they're pretty in your face as far as what they do, you know, they're big and physical and they're, they're very good defense. They're tough uh, to move around and, uh, and, and they got a big goalie and, and, you know, took up some space. So, you know, we struggled with those things at times. I thought we were a little slow out of the gates with our offense. And, um, you know, and again, face-offs were, were battling. Um, you know, I think we uh, we managed a couple a couple turnovers throughout and, and gave us some possessions. But at the end of the day, uh, biggest factor is, is, I think, the resilience of, uh, of the Blue Jay group. Those guys just dug in. They did a great job, you know, from a leadership perspective, that, that you know, senior class, those captains, um, really just making sure that like it was never in doubt and, uh, you know, they, they made it a little, little stressful, but, um, they, they found a way to make, uh, make the plays right. they needed to and finish the game. Right. And with a plethora of, uh, overtime games that we've had this year, mm. uh, which builds character and, you know, helps the team in the long run, as you know, you tend to get to a repeated question. Uh, so I apologize for the repeated question, but again, what happens in the second half in that locker room, um, you know, as you're going out and mounted a great, tremendous comeback? Um, you know, I, I think it's, it's clear that, you know, no one's expecting our, our guys to, to play flawlessly. You know, we're going to make some mistakes here and there. We're trying our best to, uh, to execute, you know, as effectively as we can, but, uh, you know, we didn't have a strong first half and, and, you know, they had, they had some timely possessions and some big goals and, and, you know, right before the half, I thought closing the last couple of minutes with two big goals to bring it from seven to two to seven, four, I think that was a big step for us going into the locker room. Cause it was, it was a real energy boost for um, I think the guys and, and, you know, they were vocal about it. They were clear again, there's a determination and a grit from that, uh, that leadership group in the locker room. And, uh, 
you know, coaches making some adjustments on either side of the field. And, you know, I think we might have double pulled for a little bit again and uh, and a couple adjustments on the offense with personnel and who's going where and, you know, how we're pairing guys up and things like that. Um, you know, coach decided to bump up two poles onto the, the faceoff wings. I thought that gave us a little bit more of a, uh, a competitive edge, you know, getting some of those loose balls that were seemed to be all coming into three on threes. Um so you know it it uh, the, you know it was hard to close that gap uh, right away. Um, you know we started to make progress, but it wasn't until really the fourth quarter where I think the you know guys managed to um, level it back out, even go up one. I thought we were pretty close, even with uh, a, a late possession in the fourth quarter, having a chance to go up two might have might have been uh, crucial there. But uh, right. as it stands, you know we got we got what we needed out of them. We you know forced an overtime and and were able to come away with a big stop. Yeah. Fantastic. And a quick uh, note here, Matt Collison gets the game winner, uh, lefty, hard <clears throat> dodge. Um, he becomes only the second Blue Jay to score two overtime winners in back-to-back -back games. Uh, the only other player to do that was Brian Christopher in the mm -hmm. 2010s era. So uh, Brian Christopher and Matt Collison get into the record book as scoring two back-to-back -back overtime goal winners. Um, tell us about that play, if you could, uh, from Coach Crawley uh, as you were mm -hmm. in overtime. Obviously, you go through scenarios, but was one of those scenarios, okay, Matt, if you get the ball, you know, this is the play we're drawing up? Uh, I mean, I guess if you if you watch that one, it, it's, it's all on script for the way, you know, that offense is designed, but not as specific as, you know, let's, let's work it around this many times and get it to this many people through these dodges and picks until we get mad over here. But um, I think throughout that possession, there was some probing, there was some, uh, you know, some motion trying to get, you know, guys in certain spots and and trying to initiate in the, what, what, what they were looking for, what they wanted, the ideal matchup when they found the advantage. Um, I think Collie just kind of saw his, his opportunity to, uh, uh, to attack the middle. And uh, he started, he started making some progress, getting in there tight they were giving them some space. They, you know, they shorted them the whole day. Um, and, uh, you know, they were slow to slide. So, you know, he got to a spot that he felt confident in. Um, and I, you know, again, I don't know if that's exactly what was on the board when, uh, when they met last in the huddle, but I don't think if you ask coach Crawley, if he wanted to do anything different than, than Matt Collison, you know, attacking a short stick from the top corner, um, right. it seemed to work out about like, uh, you know, I, I think he wanted it to. Yeah. It resembled a little bit of a boxing match where, you know, his dodge across the top of the the box, it was sort of like, you know, a jab, a jab, a jab. And then all of a sudden he had his hands free and, and made that shot. And that was the punch. So uh, mm -hmm. great job by Matt and, and very exciting to come back in that second half. Um, Coach, let me ask you a quick question. This is our 12th podcast. You know, we're in the meat of the season, you know, we have this final game against Maryland. How would you describe in one or two words the personality of this team? Hmm. Um, determined. Um, I think they're passionate about being Blue Jays. I think they are They are really in love with uh, representing the black and blue. They're really in love with playing together and, and you know, being out on Homewood and defending our turf. Um I think they are a resilient group that's been through a lot. And I, and I think you see that in, in, you know, the grit and the determination down the stretch of some of these games. Um, we've worked a lot on, on, you know, staying connected and staying together and the ups and the downs, the wins and losses, making sure we're managing sometimes that frustration or, you know, the struggles that, that, that happen throughout a game or throughout a season. And um, again, that, you know, the strength of that connection is, is I think what's really driving this group forward and and they they just love being together they love competing together um you know they, like i said they love being blue jays and uh you know they're they're really uh they're really excited for another test i mean they just they just keep asking for more which is great good good also uh we need to recognize Bowden zulik who for the third time was recognized as defender of the week in the big 10 um just a little bit about Bowden's game against ohio state and what he brought to the table yeah, he's been pretty steady in conference. There's no doubt, um, you know, consistent. He picks up ground balls. He's always got a few cause turnovers in every game. He actually 
just broke Tucker Durkin's cause turnover record, which um, is is a you know obviously really impressive. Durkin's you know one of the best ever. And uh, side note, Tucker goes into the uh, Hopkins Hall of Fame this weekend. Um, right. So I thought just a, a neat connection there. But uh, you know, really, Bo's just a consummate teammate and leader. He's uh, you know he's a big piece of the defense. He's not usually the spotlight guy or the you know the the premier matchup because he plays with. Um, you know, with Scotty and a few other guys over his career, but uh, just really steady. He's a great communicator. He's, um, you know, he's really an integral piece of that group down there. And I thought he was, uh, he was dialed in. He was, uh, he was moving well, uh, directing a, a lot of the defensive, uh, you know, uh, recoveries and, and, and support of each other. Um, again, picked up some, some big ground balls and some timely cause turnovers. So, um, you know, we just, he just couldn't be happier with, uh, with Bo and how he's doing for us. No, that's great. That's great. All right. So Pete, uh, it's Maryland week. We talk about it all the time. Many generations talk about Maryland week. Just uh, quickly, I know it's Wednesday, you know, middle of the week. Game will be Saturday at four o'clock at Homewood. Um, do, do me a favor. What, what's what's the atmosphere like? What's the temperature like around campus at the Cordish Center Homewood Field? Um, there's an, there's an obvious intensity to the week that, you know, it, it, you can hear it verbalized and there's a lot of it that, that doesn't need to be spoken. Um, you know, I've only been here four weeks, but, uh, you know, it seemed to feel like I played, you know, I'm in a million of these Maryland games already. So, um, you know, these ones are, they're, they're unique. You know, we, we, uh, earlier on the season when we we're doing these, these podcasts or when I, you know, get the media call before, before leading up to the game each week and they're asking about this rivalry or that rivalry. I mean, the reason that we don't emphasize those as much is, is mostly because of this. Like you can't, right. you can't claim every game's a rivalry when, when there's really one that stands alone. And obviously the right. matchups against, you know, the Loyola's and the Syracuse and the, you know, Virginia's and all they, there, there's a rivalry to it for sure, but you know, nothing that, that stands on this level. And so, um, you know, I think there's, there's definitely an intensity to it. You know, we're talking about, maybe a short week because we played on Sunday night and we traveled back Monday and how to manage that, and you know, want to give the guys the appropriate amount of recovery and rest, but also, you know, push through because a big week and I, like, you don't really have to say much They're They're already, you know, they're already ready to get back out on the field. They don't, you know, really care what we've been through or where we've been or how tired or sore or whatever. They just want to, they want to get back to work and they want to get ready to, to compete right. on Saturday. Understood. And as I've said to anyone who will listen, friends, colleagues, foes, you know, it's about the history, right? You you show respect to every rival in your schedule, but when it comes mm -hmm. to the number of years and the number of times that we played, it really is about the Maryland Hopkins rivalry, which is great. Um, probably a bad analogy, but I always say this, you know, there's Duke and Carolina right in basketball but you know there's also nc state and nc state's a really good basketball program but like this is our duke carolina and there's ohio state michigan in football but you know there's also michigan state right so but this this is the ohio state michigan rivalry at, when it comes to sort of length and intensity so mm -hmm. um so you know we have uh logan McEnany who's sort of <coughs> hot kind of had a rough start, but he's, he's, he's warming up. Obviously Luke Weirman mm -hmm. on face-offs, mm -hmm. Ajax Zapatello on defense. Um, you know, what are we preparing for in the Maryland game? Just give us a few things that we're preparing for. Uh, I mean, Weirman is, is probably as big of a piece as anything. He's taken um, a billion face-offs for them and he's been successful in leading that team for a long time. He's, you know, he's a really significant piece and, and he's not just a draw guy. He's, you know, he's a real throwback midi. I mean, he's tough, he's physical, he's athletic, he's got skills, you know, he'll dodge his, his face off guy. If he wins one, he'll go set picks. He runs transition. He stays on, um, you know, he doesn't run off the field if he loses. Uh, so he's, he's a real force um, in every way. Obviously we got to attack the whistle and, and, you know, really compete for that first, that first clamp, that first draw and, and, and exit. Um, if it, if it levels to a three on three, uh, which it doesn't as much with, uh, with him cause he gets the ball out quick. But if we get to a three on three, it's a lot about our wing play scrapping and, and, and fighting for, you know, inside outside position, wherever we are in that, in that phase of it. Um, you know, Ajax, an outstanding 
defenseman as good as there is in the country. He's uh, he's he's certainly going to be a challenge for us. Um, you know, I don't know what the matchups would be. My guess is he's going to cover Angel, but uh, um, they're you know they're loaded a lot of other places. You know, it's a it's a it's a really good group throughout. Um, they do a great job in substitution. They play early offense. They're transitioning from D to O well. Um, you know, they sub back on defense. Don't get stuck with Omidis uh, on that end of the field very often. Like they're you know they again like this the same theme that we talk about in the Big Ten. I mean, teams know each other really well at this point and and a lot of these teams are pretty well refined in in their systems and where they are they're not just kicking it around and, and see what happens like they they do what they do very very effectively and um, right you, know, you got to combat that in every way you can good and i'm not trying to put you on the spot but it, it is a rivalry game um mm-hmm. i just have to ask quickly you're you have a good relationship good rapport with uh, coach tillman mm-hmm. okay, yeah good um, you're both, I got up, to know you're both really upstate well. guys right you're both upstate guys yeah, both upstate guys. I obviously spent a bunch of years at, at Cornell. He's a Cornell alum, so we got to know each other well there. Played him a few times before I got down here. Um, you know, we've always had a, a good relationship. He's a great, he's a great coach, um, and and does a very good job with those guys. So I have a yeah. healthy amount of respect for him. But uh, I would just say we're not quite as close as we probably used to be, and I think that's just the nature of, of <laughs> the, makes the rivalry now. Yeah, which is okay. But uh, you know, I I, I do have a, a good amount of respect good. for him and, and the program that he runs. They do a very good job. Good. good. I will tell you for a fact that uh, Coach Chickaroni and Buddy Beardmore did not like each other. <laughs> Um, I sure. think that Coach sure. Zim, I, I say this can't candidly, Coach Zim, who I played for, Coach Zim and the big guy, Dick Adele, I think had a really good relationship. And obviously, oh, yeah. Coach, Petro, Coach Petro and Coach Cottle, uh, mm-hmm. you know, to this day, are still very close friends. But uh, I know yeah. that Coach, Coach Beardmore and Coach Chick did not like each other. That happens with every yeah. Uh, yeah. every every you know competition all over the place. Yeah. Sometimes it's, it's more cordial than others. But uh, good. Yeah. So listen, a couple of things about this game coming up and we'll try to, you know, wrap this up, but I, we have to get into some fun stuff too, but this will mm-hmm. be the 127th meeting between Johns Hopkins and Maryland. We actually do hold the edge in the record. I, Ernie might say I'm off maybe by a game or two, but I think we're 75, 50 and one over that series. Um, So it's the 127th meeting. Uh, I've been told to let people know that if they do plan to come to the game, they should buy their tickets now in advance because they are expecting a sellout. And there have been a very few times where I've seen like a packed Homewood field. And a lot of them are from the Maryland games. Um, And in fact, I think I heard from you that they, you know, they may even add some like temporary seating on the field to accommodate all those uh, fans. So make sure you buy your tickets early. Um, a couple things about the tradition. Um, in 2015, we introduced, I think when we joined the Big Ten, we introduced the, the Crab Trophy. So if people are asking how long we've been handing out the Crab Trophy, it's been since 2015. That seems to be a thrill for the players if they win. Yeah, I, it's a it's a really neat uh, yeah. piece of the tradition. And, you know, to maintain, obviously, the the rivalry is a big, is, yeah. is a big deal, but um, you know, to get a representation of where you're at in that and to, you know, right now it's in the lobby in, in Cordish downstairs, which is which is really neat for the guys to see. And yeah. obviously we want to retain uh, possession of that and keep it here for another calendar year until sure. we play them again next year. So. so, so Pete, do the Canadians on the team know the significance of that trophy? Do, do you have to? Explain- uh, I mean, the ones that are, yeah, when they're here, um, <laughs> it takes it takes a little bit of time to. To teach the youngsters, but uh, I mean, by the time you've been through it once, everybody understands and and you know is, is seen what goes into that week yeah. and what goes into that that competition. So, sure. um, yeah, I don't think you have to go from the states to get I, it. I was I was I was sort of asking more in a humorous way, like, why is it a crab? You know? <laughs> oh, uh, yeah, I guess yeah, the state of Maryland. Yeah. I don't know. I would have. Yeah. I probably wouldn't have understood that when I was uh, younger. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm from sure. Europe, but. Um. Couple things we will also, and this there's a significance here to it being Maryland. At the game on Saturday, we will honor three national championship teams. We will honor the 74 team and their 50th anniversary, the 79 team and their 45th anniversary, and the 84 team and their 40th anniversary. So the 74 79 and 84 teams will be honored at halftime. What's interesting, Pete, is the 74 
and 79 teams won their national championships against Maryland. Mm. So that's that. Great, that's, great that's little a, tidbit. Yeah. Pete, mm-hmm. anybody uh, spoken to the team? Anybody had uh, like alums, anyone, anyone who's addressed the team or. Uh, not, not recently. Yeah. I mean, it's a, a few weeks back early on in the season. We had, uh, we had a bit of that handful of guys come through. Um, you know, I think there's just a lot of, uh, of external, uh, I guess, inputs and commotion and things like that going on with this week. We just try and stay focused on us. Gotcha. Um, I think there's an incredible value to having the alums present and hearing the voices. I've, you know, been talking to a few of them, I, even just this morning, I, I texted a few and got their, their sentiments on what, you know, the rivalry always meant to them and, and what were important messages. And I think right. that'll maybe help, help, uh, you know, from a coaching perspective, message some of those things to the guys, but, you know, just trying to manage a lot like homecoming. It's like, you're going to have a million people here. There's a lot of guys, you know, asking for tickets and talking about it. And it'll be all over social. Just, you know, let that, let that fade to the, 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 the outside, just stay focused on who we are and what we do. And, and, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's 60 minutes of lacrosse um, against another team. So, you know, we right. need to bring, uh, our our version. We need to bring what we do, how we do it. We need to, uh, you know, make sure that we're there to compete for the right reasons and and not, um, you know, solely because of of you know tradition or history or right. uh, rivalry things like that. Right. Well, it goes without saying that a large number of Hopkins overtime games in its history have come against Maryland uh, on both sides of the coin, wins and losses. So you know, I think about the ninety five law class. Uh, 95 teams lost in the semis when we were undefeated and they had a very hot um, Brian Doherty in goal made mm-hmm. like 35, made like 35 saves. It was some astronomical number. I remember and, watching that game too. Yeah. And quick story for you, the 87 team, which I was a part of, you know, we had a very okay season. We were struggling. We made some adjustments. We put Quint Kestnick in goal we were two and three, I think, at one point, and then uh, lost badly to Maryland. Uh, they were undefeated, number one, and then we sort of ran the table, met them in the semifinals, and uh, upset the Terps. So, you know, that's that's a big memory for us. But yeah. then there's also the '95 loss to Maryland and a hot team that they had. So, Pete, good luck to you. Um, the one thing I failed to do at the beginning of this, this is my last comment is this is our 12th podcast. I always appreciate the time that you're giving. There's a lot of content out there. You do a lot of interviews. So thank you for doing this for the alums. They seem to be the ones who enjoy this. So thank you. Good. Yeah, I'm glad. This is our 12th podcast. So we got to mention some of the great number 12s. First and foremost, the great Jerry Schneidman, mm-hmm. great face-off king, um, recent U.S. Hall of Famer, A.J. Hogan, Mm -hmm. one of the smoothest players ever. Uh, One of our great assist men was Kevin Boland, who ironically, Kevin Boland had a father who played at Maryland. Um, Bill Nolan, one of the great 12s. And then, of course, we had the Pizer brothers. Uh, Stephen Pizer was a number 12 for us. And then the captain co-captain of the 79 team who will be there this weekend as they honor the 79 championship team is Steve way, otherwise known as sway. Unless I forget Greg Matthews, the Nash, he was another great face off guy who wore 12, (laughs) which was short for domination. But anyway, Mm -hmm. we had to mention the 12s and we look forward to a beautiful weekend, a rivalry game, Pete, all the best to you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thickum Jays. Thank you. Go Jays. See you guys this weekend.